I'm Mark Hanley, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Fish that are labeled reef safe with caution, or as I call them, fish on the fringe. These are fish that likely won't eat your coral, but they may nip at your coral. Now inverts and small fish, that's where the on the fringe part as I define it comes in. On my 448 gallon tank, I've got four fish on the fringe, and this is an update on how they're behaving themselves. The fish on the fringe in my 448 gallon reef tank are a crosshatch trigger, an Australian harlequin tusk, pyramid butterflies, and Rollins damsels. You could argue that the pyramid butterflies and the Rollins damsels are reef safe fish, and you would have a valid point. However, there are plenty of reefers that balk the idea of putting any butterfly in their reef tank. And the damsels are on my heck no list until I met the Rollins damsels. Therefore, these fish are getting into my fish on the fringe update. First up, the Harlequin Tusk. With his teeth jutting out of his mouth, he's the meanest looking fish in my tank, who's also the biggest sissy. When I feed the tank, he gets scared. If another fish swims too close to him, he gets scared. When I try to fill my tank with his camera, he gets scared. Introduce a new fish to the tank, I won't see the guy for a day. Harlequin tusks get their fish on the fringe status from the fact that they care less about coral, but they love inverts. Now, I personally won't risk putting a clam in my tank as I'm confident the tusk would eat it. Shrimp and starfish, forget about it. He's already eaten any of those that are in my tank and that was an expensive snack. Hermit crabs and snails he cares less about though. Even my pincushion urchin he leaves alone. While my tusk doesn't touch corals, he does have a taste for shrimp and starfish, and I miss having shrimp and starfish in my reef. Shrimp and starfish are also really great cleanup crew members. I've got a client who's got his eye on my tusk, so he may get rehomed. For now, he gets to stay. My pyramid butterflies. I love, love, love these fish. They get noticed by anyone who sees my tank, including plenty of you watching my videos. These guys touch nothing in my tank. I'll catch them curiously nipping at the coral once a week. One nip and they've lost interest and move on. My pyramid butterflies are pretty, eye-catching, and come from Australia, which means they're hand-caught in a sustainable fishery. These guys are here to stay, and I highly recommend them in a reef tank. Just make sure you get your pyramid butterflies from Australia. That way you know you're getting them from a short supply chain that's also sustainable and transparent. The Rollins damsels. For a long time, I was anti-damsels in a saltwater tank, and I still am unless you get more timid damsels like outlined in my damselfish show. If you missed that show, make sure you go watch it so that you're in the know. My Rollins damsels are perfect ambassadors for their species. They don't bother other fish, and they all have their little piece in the reef where they've established their territories. And they don't venture very far from their little spot. I've even observed this behavior in the ocean when I ran across some Rollins damsels in Vanuatu. These guys had their little spot on the reef, and they didn't go very far. Aggression-wise, I'll occasionally see one Rollins damsel chase another Rollins damsel if one gets too far into the other's territory. That's the extent of their aggression, though. I've never seen them chase any other fish in my tank. Now, the Rollins damsel is a damsel that I would recommend for a reef tank. However, do what I do and put them in last. That way, they're left with whatever territory is left over, as opposed to having free reign of a brand new reef tank. Last but not least is my crosshatch triggerfish. Triggers are a very fun fish to watch due to the undulating movement of their posterior dorsal fin. That's this guy right here. Triggers all fall into the fish on the fringe category due to their taste for invertebrates. How has the fish on the fringe risk that I took with the crosshatch triggerfish played on a my reef tank? Doesn't touch inverts, doesn't touch coral, but he has developed a taste for fish, specifically small fish. I put in three Bartlett Anthias into my reef tank and the crosshatch trigger went berserk. Now before I put him into my reef tank, I put him in the acclimation box so the Bartlets could have a look around the tank and everyone in the tank could have a look at the Bartlets. No one paid them any mind, including the crosshatch trigger. The moment I let them out of the box, the trigger went berserko, started chasing them around the tank. All I heard was snap, 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 and then I found one of the Bartlets dead with a chunk out of his stomach. Now after a couple hours, the crosshatch settled down and the other Bartlets remained. However, this guy's days are numbered. Sorry, buddy, I love you, but you gotta go. I like to have some small wrasses in this tank, and that's not gonna happen as long as the crosshatch is in here. I've got a client who has a large tank with only large fish, so the crosshatch is gonna get rehomed. Sorry, dude, you were cool, but you brought it upon yourself. Despite my small fish hungry crosshatch trigger and my Tesco eats inverts that I miss, I'm happy I put all these fish on the fringe of my reef. If my corals got bothered by these guys, I may have a different opinion, 
And with most fish on the fringe, they don't touch any coral. It's the inverts and potentially other fish that are on the risk category.